Hey, good morning to you. Yes, sir, Jesus is still Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Hey, the word works. We've been talking about controlling your outcome by controlling your tongue because you're going to have what you say. Thou art snared by the words of your mouth. And Pat's done an excellent job for the last couple of days talking about take no thought by saying it. Let's go to Psalm 112. I might kind of try to close this out today, but Psalm 112 starts out, says, praise ye the Lord. We need to do a lot of that. Blessed. I'm a blessed man. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord and that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Blessed, happy, fortunate, enviable is the man that puts his trust in God and delights in his word. Okay. His seed, my children, my grandchildren, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Now, this next verse might be bigger than some of you can handle, but verse 3, going right along with that, says, Wealth and riches shall be in his house. That means I got money around here somewhere. I don't know where it's at, but wealth and riches is going to be in my house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Now, watch. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Well, let me just read on down there too. I get the, unto the upright, there uh, uh, unto the upright there arises light in the darkness, for he is gracious. He's full of uh, compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He shall guide his house with discretion or with good affairs. There'll always be a remembrance of him. Now, verse seven. I want to use this in jumping off into another area. Verse 7, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Now watch this. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. What's an evil tiding? An evil tiding is anything that's contrary to the Word of God. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. We just read that verse 6, I believe it was. An evil tiding is you're not going to have enough money to pay your rent and pay your bills and they're going to come repossess your car. That is an evil tiding. I'm not afraid of that because when I hear that, I know that God makes a way where there is no way. That's no cliche. It's not Bible, but God's deliverance. I remember the Lord God who hath delivered me, who is in the process of delivering me, and who always shall deliver me. So anything that's contrary to God, such as, you know, well, you know, you're you're, you're over 60 now, so you can't do the things you want to do, or, or you know, like I, I, I have to go to the doctor once a year to renew my pilot's license, and, and he does all the tests, and he'll come back sometimes and say, well, we picked up this little thing in your blood report. Well, that's an evil tiding. I don't receive that. And I go home, get the Bible out, study the Word a little while, meditate on uh, what the Word says, that Jesus bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases. He sent His Word and healed them. Meditate on that, plant the seed of the Word of God, and whatever the doctor thought he picked up, it ain't going to be there because I'm not believing that. I'm believing what the Word says. Watch this. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings, for his heart is fixed trusting in the Lord. Now watch this, verse 8. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid. If your heart's established on the blessings of God, you're not going to be afraid of what they say has got to happen to this country, uh, you know, because of what the Russians are doing or the uh, North Koreans are doing. I don't go around every day sitting there fearing, golly, I hope they don't bomb us today. They're not going to. Because blessed is the nation whose Lord is God. Yes, but we elected a dumb, dumb president. I know that. But that doesn't have anything to do with the fact that God's still on the throne and Jesus is still Lord. And God is not through with this country yet. My heart's established on that. Now, I'm still believing for a change, a big, big change right away in what's going on in my country. Somebody said, you know, these prophets say, uh, doom and gloom and agony on me. God's going to punish this nation for all the evil that's going on. Yeah, there's a lot of evil going on. But God told Abraham that he would spare Sodom and Gomorrah, which was the evilest city that we know of, if... He could just find 10 righteous people. Well, you know, a lot of y'all watching this are righteous. I'm righteous. My wife is righteous. My kids are righteous. That's 10. 
So God's going to spare this country because there's still a lot of righteousness going on and there's some preaching of righteousness going on. And I'm not worried about this nation getting punished by God because of all the bad it's done because I didn't do none of the bad. You know, it's kind of like that dumb thing they got going on there. Like we ought to pay certain people a retribution payment or something because after all, they were brought here against their will. Well, I was born in this country I don't think I had anything to do with it. I think it was my mom and daddy that had to do with it. They don't owe me nothing. And I'm blessed enough to be in a country where I can do whatever I want to do, believe God, and I'm believing God, or I could use my faith, and I'm using my faith, or I can go get me a job. Uh, you know, I'm uh, old enough to draw Social Security, but my dependence is not in Social Security. My dependence is on a God that's a God of more than enough. Man, ain't no way in the world I could get by on what they tell me I'm supposed to get by on. My heart's fixed. I'm trusting in God. So when an evil tidings comes, I don't take that thought and then go out and say it. I just say, glory be to God. Everything's going to be all right because God's on the throne. Hey, I got to go. Remember, don't take the thought by saying it. Know by renewing your mind that the word is true and deliverance is on its way. So until I'm with you tomorrow, saints, remember Jesus. He's Lord. Thank God the word works.